Hi, my name is Jeff Solheim with Solheim Enterprises, and welcome to our Trauma Certified Registered Nurse or TCRN exam review course. Now let's spend a little bit of time and talk about wound and burn depth. So when we talk about the depth of either a burn or the depth of a wound, for both of these, we got to remember the layers of the skin. So the top layer of your skin is your epidermis. It's kind of the dead part of it, right? The, as the skin rises to the surface um, and the cells die, you get that top epidermis layer. Now, wounds or burns that affect only that top layer, that epidermis, are considered superficial. We used to call them first degrees, okay? Now, underneath your epidermis is your dermis. Your dermis is the live part. This is where nerve endings end. This is where your sweat glands are. This is where your hair follicles are. Those types of things found in the dermis. And so if you burn through the epidermis down into the underlying dermis, you have a partial thickness burn. Okay. Now, if you only burn the upper part of the dermis, it's called a superficial partial thickness. And if you burn all the way down to the basement membrane of the dermis, you have a deep partial thickness, okay? Now, if you burn below the dermis into the underlying subcutaneous tissue where you might find fat um, and even getting into muscle down in there, those are considered full thickness burns. Or if the wound extends that deep, then it's a full thickness wound. Now, on your screen right now, you can see the chart which also matches what's in your handout that goes over the various burn depths and how, what they appear like and, and how um, they heal. So a superficial burn, that's the one that burns only the epidermis, tends to get very reddened, but it rarely blisters. You really need to burn down into those blood vessels in the dermis to get blistering. And all blistering is, it is, it is a capillary leakage. And as the plasma leaks, but the skin is intact, you get that plasma collecting under the skin. So in, in a uh, superficial burn, we don't tend to burn down into the capillary beds and we don't get that capillary leakage. Therefore, blisters are not common, but the burn itself will appear reddened and it will blanch with pressure. I mean, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, but what do you think about with a first degree burn? You think sunburn, right? Now that's thermal um, from radiation, but a, a sunburn is a, a generally, unless it blisters, most of your sunburns are just going to be a superficial burn. Now, uh, the, the pain depends on how severe the burn is. It can be anywhere from mildly irritating all the way to exquisitely painful. And it takes two to seven days for the uh, burn to heal. Many times that epidermal layer is going to peel, so they'll get the peeling on the top, um, and then it'll be replaced with uh, tissue from the underlying dermis. Now, a superficial partial thickness burn will not only be red, but it will blister, because now you burn down into the dermis, the blood vessels are involved, you're gonna have that plasma leakage, you're gonna get blisters. Now, there is still good circulation to the area, so it will blanch when you push on it. And these are some of the most painful burns, because here the nerve ends are exposed, they're raw. You know, you've burnt down into the upper nerve ends, so these tend to be the most painful burns. They will heal, um, the dermal, the, the basement membrane of the dermis is intact, so the cells can grow from that dermal layer up, but it can take anywhere from 7 to 21 days for a superficial partial thickness burn to heal. Now, a deep partial thickness burn, which burns all the way down to the basement membrane of the dermis, may appear either a mottled pink or white. Um, it may or may not blister. It depends upon if there's enough skin intact over top. If the skin is not intact, then there's nothing to capture the fluid, so there won't be blistering. But if the skin does remain intact over top, there can be blistering. Um, generally, after a day or two, because the circulation is so poor to the area, the burn it will take on a whitish appearance, and it will not blanch, because really the circulation is compromised in this area. Now, these patients may not have as deep of pain as the superficial partial thickness because the nerve ends themselves have been burnt and they may not be as sensitive to pain. So instead of exquisite pain, the patient may um, notice that they have a discomfort in the area as opposed to a pain. But one of the things that's a falsehood is that, you know, we talk about the deeper the burn, the less the pain. And that is true. 
But that's a kind of a falsehood too. We shouldn't be withholding pain medications because most of the time when somebody has like a deep partial thickness burn that may not be as painful, a lot of times the area around it is a superficial partial thickness burn, which is exquisitely painful. So you, the patient will still need pain medication because the burn depths may alter depending on um, how much the tissue is exposed to the heat source. A deep partial thickness burn um, it takes a lot longer to heal because the, the dermal basement membrane is, is not intact anymore. So therefore, there's nothing to grow up. So the skin's got to grow from the outside in, and that can take four to six weeks, especially with a larger burn. In fact, with really large burns, it, there, you know, it may not be able to grow from the outside in, and the patient may need a skin graft. Now, a full thickness burn, um, it may be described as leathery or firm. This tissue is not alive, so it feels like, like leather when you touch it. It's insensitive to light touch or pen prick. They may just feel deep pressure because of all the nerve damage. And a full thickness burn will require a skin graft. 